Welcome to webinar on WSO2 API Micro Gateway 3.0, the latest release. I'm Rajit Roshan from WSO2 API Manager team, and Pramind Jayawardena, also from WSO2 API Manager team, will join webinar. So uh, first of all, let me explain what a micro gateway is. So in simple terms, a micro gateway is a proxy that stands in front of your microservices. So each provide values to developers, uh, like exposing the governance, uh, discovery, uh, observability, like uh, functionalities in a common uh, reusable component and provide values to the operators, like enforcing security and policies through a centralized control panel. So thus, we will end up with a, a service mesh kind of architecture where it uh, uh, with, where, where it gives us an ex, uh, extra uh, extra layer of uh, layer uh, like for service discovery, uh, service dynamic service routing, and uh, application of security across unified manner across the uh, set of microservices and services. So uh, let me uh, briefly explain the uh, architecture of uh, WSO2 API micro gateway. It has uh, two basic components, the runtime component and the toolkit component. The toolkit component is a, uh, is a tool used by API developers to create and manage the micro gateway projects. So it micro gateway toolkit accepts a open API definitions and creates my uh, runtime artifacts uh, later used by the micro gateway runtime component. So these runtime artifacts can be either executable files or Docker container image or Kubernetes artifacts. So a uh, toolkit is a, a tool for API developers. It's a command line interface to manage uh, micro gateway projects. So uh, API developers can initialize micro gateway projects with uh, standard open API definitions. And later they can build the project uh, to uh, generate runtime artifacts uh, and immutable containers or Kubernetes artifacts. So these uh, these artifacts will be used by the runtime components. And uh, a toolkit also uh, can import APIs from WSO2 API Manager Publisher Portal as well. And uh, the runtime component is the uh, component which serves the request coming to the backend services. It applies the security rate limiting, transformation, analytics, and many more functionalities uh, through the gateway layer. So this runtime component is available as uh, archive distribution as well as Docker images as well. So this uh, runtime uh, works on top of the artifacts generated by the uh, toolkit component. So uh, let me briefly do a demonstration. So here I have a microservice where I'm going to expose it using the micro gateway. So no longer the uh, end users will be able to access the micro service directly. They will have to uh, connect with micro gateway using a secure token. So uh, in this demo, uh, we are using a use case where a set of API developers uh, developing an online bookstore. So I have a service to list my uh, books available in my uh, bookstore. So in uh, Kubernetes, I have deployed a uh, service to list uh, books. So uh, this is the uh, microservice. So I'm going to expose that uh, microservice using the micro gateway. So first of all, I need to create a micro gateway project. So the command is micro gateway init and the project name. I'm going to specify the project name as bookstore. So uh, the mic, uh, the project is created successfully. Let me do a tree command and show you the project structure. So the API definitions folder is uh, where we need to put all the standard open API definitions. And a deployment config toml file has the uh, deployment related to Docker and Kubernetes. And by default, we provide certain extensions for startup and to have customized error messages due, uh, for uh, authorization errors, throttling errors, and etc. 
and interceptors is where uh, the API developer has to put all the uh, custom code written uh, from Ballerina for their transformation or mediation. And policies YAML define all the uh, throttling or the rate limiting policies for the micro gateway. And services, these uh, by default services are proxy services which connect to key manager for token, revoke, authorize, and user info inputs. So now I have created the micro gateway project. So now uh, I'm going to, now as a, as a microservice developer, I have written my open API definition. So I am going to copy that to my micro gateway project. I'm going to copy it to the API definitions folder. So uh, now let me open uh, the uh, my project. So uh, this is the uh, my basic open API definition. So now I'm going to expose this service using micro gateway. In order to do that, we need to use uh, WSO2 micro gateway specific open API vendor extension. So we need uh, two uh, basic vendor extensions. So the first one is uh, the to provide the uh, base path in which the microservice is exposed. So the vendor extension is XWSO2 base path. So I'm going to provide the base path as bookstore slash v1 and we need to provide at least a one production or a sandbox endpoint for the microservice so the window extension for that is xwso2 production endpoints and i can provide a multiple urls for load balance or for failover purposes so uh, now, uh, since I have only one service, uh, I'm going to provide that URL. So now uh, you, uh, I have uh, edited my open API definition. So I can uh, now I can build this project and generate runtime artifacts. So the command to build is micro gateway build the project name. So uh, we can provide the URLs as an array. So I have mistaken the format. So uh, now I am going to rebuild the project. So now we can see the runtime artifacts uh, are generated using the toolkit. So first of all, let me uh, invoke the microservice directly and show you the output. So I'm directly invoking the microservice. So it, uh, you can see the microservice has responded. So now I'm going to invoke the microservice using the uh, micro gateway runtime. So I'm going to run micro gateway runtime using the Docker container. So uh, the command to run the micro gateway Docker container is Docker run. Then I'm going to mount the artifact generated by the toolkit component inside the Docker container.
I'm going to mount into the home exec folder of the Docker container. Then I'm going to expose the port 9095, which is the HTTPS port. And I'm going to expose 9090 port, which is the HTTP port. And I have to provide the project name as environment variable. So the project name is bookstore. And I'm going to use the latest micro gateway image. So uh, I have already running a Docker container. So let me stop it. So now uh, I can run my Docker container. So yeah, my new Docker container should be now up and running. So let me try to invoke this microservice via the micro gateway. So first of all, let's try to invoke it directly without the token. So we can see that it says missing credentials because now additional security is provided by the micro gateway for the for my microservice. So I need to get a valid token from uh, key manager. So I'm going to use the WSO2 API manager uh, to get a valid token. So I'm going to log into stop portal and get a token. So let me set the token to the command line. And now I'm going to invoke the microservice using the token. So now we can see how, uh, the, how my microservice is exposed using the micro gate. So uh, now let me briefly explain some of the key uh, ex uh, key uh, aspects of micro gateway. So a micro gateway is designed in a cloud native manner and it is a uh, developer centric or the more developer oriented and uh, it can deploy in decentralized manner and it is specially designed for microservices and uh, micro gateway is immutable and it's highly scalable. So, so uh, in order to in order to application to be a cloud native, there should be certain uh, uh, condition it should satisfy. So micro gateway comes as very lightweight containers. It uh, boot, up, boot up in less than one second and uses very low memory, like less than 256 megabytes. And uh, it has a very low distribution size, like 100 MB for Docker images and the binaries. And it is completely designed in a stateless manner, so perfectly fit into the containers world where the containers get uh, killed and respawned. And uh, it does not depend on the underlying system or the underlying operating system. So this can be deployed in any infrastructure like cloud or elastic or self-service. And uh, the experience provided by the micro gateway toolkit uh, gives the developers more uh, better DevOps uh, experience and gives a very smooth CI CD process. And uh, also, the micro gateway toolkit generates the uh, runtime artifacts and we can automate the deployment process. So, for example, we can, uh, we can uh, create a Jenkins server to automatically deploy when a particular commit is made to the micro gateway. Uh, micro gateway project. So, uh, and uh, micro gateway is developed with frameworks suited for uh, cloud uh, environment. So, it's based on a Ballerina language, which is specially designed for, uh, is specially designed as a cloud native programming language. And uh, micro gateway is uh, developer centric, uh, 
so uh, developers uh, start creating a micro microservices and they can uh, define their uh, interfaces of their microservices using open api definitions and uh, they can later use these open api definitions to create micro gateway projects and collaboratively develop that project and uh, finalize the project and this project can be later checked out by the operations team and can be deployed in a uh, environment. So a uh, micro gateway is uh, highly uh, decentralized. Uh, so it, uh, it supports like per API gateway concept where like if you have very high scalable uh, microservices, uh, you can have a uh, per API for your microservice and uh, and it also supports like private jet and sidecar modes, uh, like uh, where the certain microservices are exposed via a single micro gateway or a cluster of gateways. And uh, it can support the sidecar pattern where micro gateway resides with the microservice in the same pod as a separate process, uh, similar, to, uh, similar to a sidecar attached to a motorcycle. And uh, it can also uh, like expose subset of APIs using a single gateway as well, which is the shared mode. And a uh, micro gateway is immutable. So it, uh, if uh, to a change to a or API interface or adding a new resource to a particular API, it needs to rebuild uh, and redeploy using rolling updates. So uh, if adding a new gateway, adding a new API means adding a new micro gateway to your uh, existing cluster. And uh, the micro gateway containers are immutable and the runtime artifacts are also immutable. So if uh, change to a API definition or a resource uh, need a build of runtime artifacts and uh, containers. So uh, micro gateway also is very highly scalable. So uh, because it uh, serves traffic independently, so when used with self-contained tokens, it does not need a key manager to validate the tokens. So it does the token validation on its own and it can do the rate limiting uh, uh, locally. So it does not need a external rate limiting a component like traffic manager. And uh, it locally stores all the analytics data as well. So it writes the analytics data locally and upload it to the analytics server when it's available. So micro gateway can be scaled independently without having to scale these components. So that's why it has very high scalability. So it can be scaled with the uh, scaling requirement of the microservice. So if a particular service needs a very high uh, scaling requirement, then micro gateway can be horizontally scaled with that microservice. So uh, I'm going to explain uh, some of the features we added in this release, uh, the 3.0 release. Uh, so it's a uh, micro gateway uh, in the 3.0 release, we have completely decoupled with the API, WSO2 API manager in, in the design phase. So API developers don't need to create APIs in the API publisher portal anymore, they can write the open API definitions for their microservices and start creating micro gateway projects and build them and deploy. And uh, we support a per resource endpoints concept. This is comes handy in like microservices world. In this example, we are the uh, same set of microservices exposed via a same gateway as a single API. For example, the get product resource and the post product resource having two different endpoints, uh, which points to two different microservices. And in the open API definition, we can add those two resources and define two different uh, backends for that and expose uh, using the micro gateway. And um, we support mutual SSL authentication as well. So there might be requirements uh, where we allow to uh, invoke APIs for the trusted clients only for that. In that case, uh, uh, before uh, we can have like uh, sharing of the certificates between the gateway and the external party, then the, those clients can only invoke the services available via a micro gateway. 
and uh, micro gateway supports a request response schema validation so the open api definition uh, defines the request and response payloads uh, how it should be so uh, based on the open api definition schema micro gateway can validate the request and response so if a particular request comes if the request is valid uh, and is according to the open api definition it will allow to pass to the backend and if the request is invalid it will not be a uh, pass to the backend, then micro gateway will reply to the client to, uh, with error code 422. And in the response path also, if the uh, backend send a valid response, the that response will be passed through to the client. And if it sends an invalid response, then error 500 will be sent to the client. So uh, this is another a cool feature we added with uh, this release. So in the microservices world, uh, where uh, this uh, there can be uh, like so many services coming uh, coming and going. So the host uh, host names, IPs, the service names can be dynamic. So if these uh, dynamic host names, IPs are maintained in a key value pair server like etcd. So micro gateway can, can connect to the ETCD server and uh, get the real time updates from ETCD server about the backends and uh, route the traffic to the correct backend using the connection to the ETCD server. So like in these examples where the microservices uh, can uh, spawn up and it can have uh, and it can be respawned with a different uh, service name or a port or a host name so micro gateway connects with the etcd server to resolve the correct host name service name or ports and route the traffic to the relevant endpoint uh, micro gateway also supports global throttling so up to the uh, 2.0 it has only the local throttling so if you have like a particular use case to allow only 100 requests for a particular api so then if you expose the same uh, API using three micro gateways, uh, if you use the local throttling, the actual amount you will be allowing would be 300. So with the global throttling, uh, the micro all the micro gateways publishes the uh, throttling uh, events to the uh, central uh, traffic manager component, the WSO2 API manager traffic manager component, and traffic manager component will uh, notify the micro gateways about the total decisions. And uh, in this micro gateway 3.0, we support uh, like on the fly transformation. So there might be requirements. We need uh, like request response enrichment uh, where we need to like convert JSON to XML or XML to JSON kind of scenarios. And we, we need a we may might come up with a requirement to add additional headers or header manipulation. So this kind of scenarios we can achieve to achieve through uh, interceptors. Uh, so we can provide the in interceptors in the open API definitions. So these interceptors will have to be written by the API developer using the Pellerina language. So uh, in the during the uh, request flow, the request interceptors will be getting uh, invoked before sending the uh, dispatching the request to the backend and the response interceptors will be getting invoked before sending the response back to the client and uh, in micro gateway uh, it supports http2 as well so there can be like different user stories where uh, both the client and the backend supports http2 so in that scenarios both the client to micro gateway and the micro gateway to backend connection will be http2 and there might be scenarios like only the client supports the http2 and the backend does not support http2 so the client to micro gateway connection will be http2 and when connecting with the backend it will downgrade the connection to http 1.1 and also uh, in this is happens vice versa as well where the backend supports http2 and client uh, supports only http1 so uh, another uh, feature we added is uh, support for the jwt revocation so uh, 
in uh, micro gateway if we use self contained jwt tokens whenever uh, the token get revoked uh, micro gateway will never know about the revoked token so because it's self validated until the token gets expired micro gateway will never know about the revoked token so we support uh, two notification types via uh, persistent notification via etcd and real time notification via jms subscription so the etcd server is the per persistent notification mechanism we support where my during the boot up every micro gateway connects with the etcd server and fetches all the revoked token in the etcd server and keeps them in the memory so and uh, in during the real time the tokens get expired will be get notified via the uh, topic subscription so uh, the so secure token service will have to push the revoke token to the message broker and the etcd server so the micro gateway will fetch from etcd server during startup and uh, from the message broker during the runtime so uh, so uh, like these new features will be like explained and demoed through the upcoming screencast so we will uh, notify the uh, screencast recordings links through the this blog post so now uh, let's move to the uh, demo demo uh, demonstration so now i have created my microservice and i have tested it so i am going to push this project uh, to uh, github so other developers can uh, develop on top of this So now I have pushed my project to the uh, GitHub. So uh, now Praminder will continue on demonstrating how we can, how uh, developers can collaboratively develop on top of this and how they can uh, deploy this in a production and dev environment. Okay, so before we move into the demo, I'll just uh, first explain uh, how the uh, micro gateway project development workflow is going to happen. <clears throat> so in this case, we have developer one, uh, who, which is Rajit in our uh, scenario. So he have uh, developed uh, two microservices in this case, and also he has uh, define the open API specific definition for those microservices uh, and added all of the uh, the vendor specific ex extensions required by micro gateway <clears throat> so now we will move into the micro gateway tool toolkit uh, initialize the project which he did and then he will build that project uh, which will generate uh, set of uh, runtime artifacts uh, that can be the ballerina executable or kubernetes docker artifacts and he will use the micro gateway runtime uh, with the runtime component uh, he will test the generated micro gateway uh, yeah uh, 
generated micro gateway project and if the test is passed he will commit uh, all of the project resources into the github so this part was done by the rajit by rajit and so now we will move into the other part so dev2 is in this case some other developer <coughs> who is developing another set of microservices and he has done the same things uh, so he will basically uh, pull this uh, repository into his own local machine and they the he will he or they will uh, in, try to improve and add other microservices or resources or change configuration or some kind of an improvement on this uh, micro gateway project then they will also change the open api definitions that is inside this project so after that they will build do the same thing basically build the using the tool micro gateway toolkit they will build the project and uh, again using the runtime they will test uh, this project and commit that changes into the github so when it comes to so after all of these things have happened though so the development team is now ready uh, think that the project is ready to deploy de to be deployed into a development environment which is a common environment so that all developers can access and test the project <clears throat> so they talk to the uh, operations team uh, devops teams basically and ask them to deploy this project into the development environment so in that case the operations team will check out the github project and they will cre basically create this configuration file called deployment config uh, we will show that uh, uh, in the demo so uh, basically what they are going to configure in here is the set of uh, configurations related to the exact deployment that this project is to going to be deployed so using that deployment configuration file and the project they will again build the project which in this case will generate a set of uh, deployment artifacts uh, this can be kubernetes artifacts and then uh, contain images and executable files so after that they will deploy these kubernetes artifacts into the dev environment and developers will start testing in the in this common uh, development environment after some time this uh, when developers think that this project is stable enough to move into the next uh, or basically to be promoted into the next environment uh, in this case the test environment they will again ask the operations team to uh, promote this project into the uh, test environment so in that case again uh, operations team will uh, check out the latest changes from the github project and they will create another uh, deployment configuration which has the new configurations to the test environment deployment and again they will build a new project but in this case the configuration will be created in a manner so that the these set of uh, runtime artifacts will not be generated and the whatever the artifacts that are needed by this deployment will be using the same artifacts that was generated in the uh, de development environment it is because because that uh, the dev whatever the artifacts that are running on development environment right now is the set of artifacts that are tested and verified by the developer so that we do not need to generate new set of artifacts to uh, run on this new test environment so in this case they will not generate the runtime artifacts they will just basically generate the kubernetes artifacts required to create this deployment <coughs> and deploy into the test environment so the same thing will happen uh, again and again until the project reaches the production status and uh, operations team is uh, complete has completed moving or promoting the project into uh, production environment 
so now let's move into the demo so here i have uh, cloned the uh, repository that, that was uh, used by uh, rajit uh, to uh, initialize the micro gate project and pushes uh, changes uh, related to bookstore uh, open uh, microservice <coughs> or the api so here i have the clone repository and in the api definition i have the um, bookstore service ml which was uh, pushed by Rajit. so i'll open this project in visual code so now uh, if we check the services that are available or created in our kubernetes cluster here we have a, uh, so rajit used this uh, books list uh, microservices microservice and i am going to include this book search functionality into this uh, micro gateway api <clears throat> so here I, we have deployed this book search uh, microservice in the kubernetes cluster uh, and now uh, we need to add this into the uh, open api definition of micro gateway project so I have created a sample definition of uh, search uh, a, a microservice resource in this uh, in this YAML file. So I'll copy this definition into the uh, bookstore service YAML which we are using in the micro gateway project uh, uh, let me show you the changes i have done so if you can see here i have added a new resource uh, which is a get on books search and you can provide a search query uh, to get the relevant uh, or required set of books <coughs> and also here uh, I have defined the production or the endpoint backend endpoint of this resource uh, as uh, by basically by reference. So earlier Rajit defined it, this endpoint in inline uh, inline manner. So here I have defined this in by uh, reference. So why I have done this done this is. Uh, later i'll show you i have a requirement to refer this endpoint in a runtime basically in a runtime configuration so for that i need i need uh, some kind of a way to refer to this uh, endpoint and for that i am using the by reference definition of the endpoints so what i have done is i have pointed uh, xwso to endpoints book search uh, endpoint as the production endpoint of this resource so this is the definition of uh, that uh, endpoint so in this case another thing is i have defined this endpoint as an etcd endpoint which will basically uh, uh, talk to an ET, uh, running etcd server and ask for this keys value if that was not found then this default value will be used to uh, populate the actual backend url also <clears throat> another thing is here i have a need uh, to valid do a valid uh, header val uh, request header validation before my request move goes into the uh, actual backend so I need to validate if uh, the request has 
x auth header if it doesn't contain then he that header i don't want that request to be uh, reached by the actual backend also uh, i'll show you an example when the request uh, let's say i am doing a search and uh, the result of the search query is empty response in that case my client side doesn't like to have get a uh, empty response it will need uh, some value basically i i need the uh, uh, the length of the uh, array the res re uh, resulting books array so for that i i have defined another uh, interceptor uh, in the response path uh, to give me an uh, length value if the response is empty basically if the search query's response is empty it will give uh, a response with uh, uh, length value defined okay uh, so now i will build this uh, project uh, before that i need to uh, let me show you the uh, that uh, interceptors interceptor functions i have defined so as Raj, rajit explained earlier the whatever the interceptors that we have to define it should go into the projects interceptors directory so i have uh, uh, before coming into this uh, webinar i have defined uh, an interceptor uh, set of interceptors in this interceptor bell file uh, so i'll copy that into the project interceptors directory so this is the definition so in this valid validate header uh, function i'm going to uh, verify if the xauth header is available in the request otherwise i'm going to send a error response uh, in the response path uh, this interceptor function will be uh, called so in that case i'm going to add if the uh, pay, re response payload coming from the backend is empty i'm going to uh, send this length zero response back to the client so now uh, i'll uh, build this project so this micro gate micro dash gw uh, executable is coming from the toolkit micro gate toolkit distribution i have added already installed and added this to path so okay here i have uh, the executable file so earlier rajit uh, showed you how you can uh, use this file uh, uh, and uh, run it uh, using docker container now i will show you how to run this uh, executable file uh, with the uh, gateway runtime distribution so gateway executable is the executable that is uh, provided or exposed by the gateway runtime component so i have also installed and uh, added this uh, to the path variable so i'll just so So this is how you run an executable uh, generated uh, execute ballerina executable using the runtime component runtime distribution.
so if we go here uh, so this is uh, the direct basically my backend endpoint for the search resource so i'll first uh, invoke that uh, so my search query is kilo so i get this response uh, which matches the title of the book <coughs> so now if i uh, you can see the log that is uh, printed in here uh, so i have my https uh, port exposed the gateway post export in export exposed in uh, 1995 port so i'll use that uh, uh, the con api context is bookstore v1 and the resource path is this one so now uh, if you remember i i have added an uh, interceptor to validate the exoth header uh, in this case i haven't sent the exoth header so i'll add some dummy value and send the request so i get the response back from the back uh, let's say i give some kind of a non-existing non-existing project query so in this case i get the length zero if i use the same query directly on the back end i get this response which is an empty array so our validate uh, the interceptors are working and the gateway is also working so this is how uh, basic testing on our micro gateway api project so now i think that uh, this project is so we think that this project is ready to be moved into the de development environment and we ask the de uh, devops guys to push this into our uh, de development environment so uh, what they will do is they will again clone this uh, project into their local machine and uh, as i explained earlier they will create a configuration file uh, which is called deployment configuration so in here i have done uh, added the basic configuration like this so in here i am enabling the kubernetes uh, deployment and uh, i'm asking to create two replicas of my uh, service this deployment <coughs> and i'm setting my image pool policy as always and this is the ba base image i'm going to use so by setting build image true at the build time i'm going i'm asking the ballerina environment to build my uh, build a new container image for me and push that into my uh, docker registry so this is the image i want to push into my docker registry <coughs> also i am giving the etct endpoint url as an environment variable uh, like this so this is again deployed in uh, my Kubernetes cluster. <coughs> also in here, I'm uh, providing a Kubernetes configuration map, which is the, uh, which is again the, uh, in this case, default uh, micro gateway runtime configuration file. So I'll copy this file. into my projects conf directory and again i'm going to build the project and this time so as the devops guy this time i'm going to provide the uh, new uh, deployment configuration file i've created <coughs>
so if you can see here it is creating set of uh, artifacts and also it takes some time because it is pushing my uh, docker image to my docker registry <laughs> so now the deployment is uh, the build is complete now if i check and the set of services i have in my cluster so i have uh, these two backend endpoints i'm using in this micro gateway project and the etcd service so now i will apply this kubernetes uh, deployment configuration so all of my artifacts are deploy deployed into my kubernetes cluster now if i do uh, get service on kubernetes cluster it will show that these kubernetes artifacts services are deployed so uh, so this is the 9095 uh, port this service is for uh, 1995 port which is the one i'm interested in so i'll so uh, again i have uh, here i have uh, entered my kubernetes one of my node ips in my kubernetes cluster so this is the port uh, of my new uh, micro gateway api and i am going to uh, invoke the list re list resource of my api so again i am providing the authorization bear token uh, in a header if, if you can see uh, i get the correct response so in in this case this is our development environment uh, also i can try to knock the search resource as well i am providing the auth x auth header and the authorization header and i get the correct response so uh, like this other developers can also join in and test this api right now because this is a common environment and deployed into uh, the <coughs> kubernetes cluster so after some time when the developers thinks that this uh, apis or the project is now ready to be deployed into the production environment they will again ask uh, devops guys to or the devops teams to promote this api into production environment so in that case what uh, they will do is they will again create a new uh, they will again create a new uh, um, deployment uh, configuration uh, to point at uh, new uh, new uh, production deployment so again i have define this uh, deployment uh, configuration file so in here uh, i'm i don't ask as i explained earlier i don't ask the build to be uh, at the image to be built or pushed into my docker registry i'm going to reuse the same image i have pushed earlier in to my development environment so in this case if you see if you can see in here uh, i am trying to override i am providing environment set of environment variables and in here i am providing my uh, that by reference uh, 
endpoint uh, ID to override this endpoint URL. So in here I'm saying, uh, giving uh, if we open the project ML file again, here uh, I have defined two endpoints by reference, book list and book search. So here I'm providing my uh, the endpoint name and production production no sandbox endpoint. So I'm providing this new end, endpoint URL and overriding the existing endpoint URL that is there in the uh, YAML file, the project definition YAML file. So the so the need to do this kind of a configuration is that uh, the actual backend that that is pointed that the in the production environment is different from the uh, backend that is pointed by uh, the development environments uh, project configuration. So now I need to override without gener regenerating my uh, project artifacts. I need to uh, somehow uh, direct all of my resource uh, request request into these uh, endpoints. <coughs> the configuration map part is again the same. So I'll copy this uh, file into my project. On. And then I'll switch my Kubernetes cluster uh, to production environment and build the project again. Again, I'm going to apply these uh, Kubernetes artifacts into my production environment. So if I list the services in my production environment, again, I have created these uh, services in my Kubernetes production Kubernetes cluster. So again, the 9095 port is mapped to this port. If I invoke this now, Should be a TTPS. I get the correct response. <laughs> so this is basically the workflow uh, of uh, developing and migrating a project uh, with uh, WSO2 API micro gateway. Uh, so is there? Uh, we can okay so uh, Rajit uh, will uh, again uh, continue on the presentation on uh, deployment patterns
So uh, let's look at some of the deployment patterns of uh, micro gateway. So this is uh, like the uh, standard uh, monolithic centralized deployment uh, where uh, same set of uh, services are exposed using a cluster of gateways. So each and every gateway will uh, uh, will expose uh, all of the services. So this is like more like a legacy gateway kind of scenario. So micro gateway can support uh, this deployments as well and the other scenario is like the private jet or sidecar mode in microservices architecture so micro gateways uh, can directly expose a particular microservice uh, using a single micro gateway and also the inter, uh, internal uh, communication between microservices will also be proxied via the micro gateway And also uh, like in a service mesh kind of uh, a deployment uh, similar to Istio. So the micro gateway comes into play when we are trying to expose all the services, microservices as APIs to the outside world. So these, uh, the, these can be like uh, sidecars where the microservices and proxy uh, where the proxy is can be an envoy or something other, other proxy. And uh, it communicates with the control panel to uh, uh, provide the uh, service mesh capabilities. And micro gateway provides an additional management layer kind of uh, uh, functionality when exposing all these microservices as APIs to the outside world. So these are the like basic uh, deployment patterns we can use in uh, different architectures or different uh, design uh, patterns. So I think uh, that's uh, basically sum up the uh, the new features and the demonstration of the micro gateway 3.0. So now uh, we are ready uh, to uh, answer the questions. So uh, we have a uh, one question like uh, how does the micro gateway connects with the API publisher portal? So uh, yes, uh, during the design time, uh, API micro gateway still supports fetching APIs from the publisher. So you can uh, fetch APIs using the name version and also you can categorize the APIs using labels and fetch them similar to the uh, similar to the micro gateway 2.60. Uh, another question is how about clustering? Do we need tools like Nginx? So the micro gateway does not need a clustering mechanism because it does not have any shared artifacts between the nodes. So uh, no need to have a clustering mechanism. Yes, uh, it can. Uh, it may need tools like Nginx because uh, sometimes in the deployment uh, we uh, not directly exposing the gateway to the outside uh, where the uh, the load balancer terminates the SSL connection and uh, forwards the connection to the micro gateway. So low in low Nginx would be required for the load balancing purpose only. And uh, the clustering is not required for the micro gateway since uh, to the API gateway, like it does not need like uh, any uh, sharing bit sharing resources between among the uh, d uh, nodes of uh, micro gateways. Another question is uh, how does validate the token? Is it application specific or user specific? How micro gateway is tied to a key manager? So uh, micro gateway uh, supports uh, for like uh, two scenarios in the O2 flow like it can have opaque access tokens. When uh, opaque access tokens are used micro gateway connects with the key manager in order to validate the token and uh, it can be either application token, uh, so the uh, opaque token can be application token or, or a user token. So based on the grant type, it can be application token or a user token. So the same concept applies to the JWT, so it can be application token or a user token. Uh, uh, so uh, when the JWT is used, it's a self-contained token. Micro gateway does not communicate with the key manager to validate the token. It uh, validate the signature of the uh, JWT. So micro gateway should know the public certificate of the key manager 
so it can uh, validate the signature uh, the of the uh, token so which is issued by the key manager and uh, yeah micro gateway uh, like uh, for the jwt scenarios key manager is required only for the token uh, issuing purpose and uh, for the o2 opaque scenario key manager is required for the validation as well so in the jwt scenarios uh, key man micro gateway can be configured to use with any third party key managers which can issue uh, jwts Uh, so there's another question uh, is the same functionality plan for api manager 3.0 and when can we expect it so i am not quite sure what the functionality is being referred here so assuming that uh, the functionality is like uh, the in three api manager 3.0 uh, the synapse gateway also going to support the jwt tokens and uh, also uh, like uh, it has a, a cli tool where uh, when the open api definition we use for the micro gateway can be uh, used with that cli tool directly push the uh, pushes and create an api in the api manager publisher as well so uh, i hope uh, that answers because i am not quite sure what the functionality meant here so uh, i think uh, that's all the questions we have so thank you very much for joining with us